The book Kalam Gamil has an excellent section in the beginning of the book about the basic phonological character characteristics of Egyptian colloquial Arabic, which says that the is about the syllable boundaries. So, due to the fact that in Egyptian colloquial there is no greater a pause between words in continuous speech than there is between the syllables of a single word, the syllable boundaries are not necessarily coincident with the word. The syllable patterns may change with the succession of another word uttered in close association. El kitab, il kitab. Il mufid, il kitab bil mufid, il kitab bil mufid. So such changes in syllable patterns can be summarized as follow then. Insertion of transitional vowels, elision of an unstressed i or u, elision of the glottal stop, shortening of the long vowel or lengthening of the final short vowel. So these are the typical five <coughs> situation. So let's just demonstrate this with a simple example. Here we have the word sura, meaning picture. When I want to say my picture, suriti, this is this would be the classical standard Arabic way of pronunciation, which doesn't change uh, anything. Even the spelling, I mean, in Arabic script spelling, is just the e for my is added to the word. Of course, the usual tamar buta changes to. A t or ta, and that's all. And the pronunciation is quite straightforward. This is classic standard Arabic, where the Arabic script <clears throat> was spelled and pronounced as it was written. However, Egyptian Arabic, a number of <clears throat> modifications happen, as explained in the previous chapter. Action, no, in this case, two. First of all, the elision of the E sound. So the surit, this E is eliminated. This is what we call elision. And also, the shortening of the long vowel before double consonants, rt. So before that, in Egyptian Arabic, it, no way you are not allowed to pronounce a long vowel. So the actual pronunciation in Egyptian Arabic is surti, surti. Instead of suriti, surti. The second example is even more interesting, very popular as in general uh, in Arabic, active participle which behaves like a, a verb especially in Egyptian Arabic, but in Classical Arabic too, so no problem with that. It is an adjective as well as a verb-like characteristics, very interesting feature, actually very similar to any other languages. <clears throat> Here is eyes. This is quite straightforward. It is pronounced mm, in Classical as well as in Egyptian Arabic, wanting in masculine form. When you want to say it in uh, feminine way, Aiza. This would be the classical standard Arabic way of pronunciation. However, in even here, again, a shortening of the long vowel happens, and the elision of e sound is also happens exactly the same way as happened here in the sorti example, Aiza, because. There are a double consonant, and then the vowel, long vowel should be shortened, and the <clears throat> elision of the E is happening here. Let's continue what's happening when you add uh, the HA 
or ha uh, suffix for third person singular uh, feminine wanting it or wanting her in classical arabic this would be something like ayizataha so the however in egyptian arabic this is completely different first of all this suffix uh, ha marked in the long this is the uh, even in egyptian arabic this would be the spelling in arabic script however the pronunciation would be a bit different first of all this ha long a is short in egyptian arabic and then the the ha would be added to the Aiza, so therefore it would be Aizatha, Aizatha. Notice again a very important feature that the stress shifts to the next to last syllable. That's again a very important. In Egyptian Arabic, that's almost a must. So your speech sounds Egyptian Arabic when it your the stress is almost always on the uh, next to last syllable aizatha instead of aizataha so friends that was just a short recap and what is important that for example if you have a book like the kalam gamil kalam gamil uh, uses almost exclusively Arabic script. However, you have to learn the pronunciation rules in Egyptian Arabic. And then when you, of course, you listen to the recordings, audio recording uh, a lot. However, uh, keep in mind that uh, you should learn the rules when and how to pronounce these words. So that's why uh, a Latin or Romanized transcription would be quite useful. That, for example, when you say this uh, spelling, then you know that in Egyptian Arabic it should be pronounced.